Um, yes, and it I'm was. really excited to be here. Um, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting everyone to um, be relentless in the work that they're doing um, each and every day. Um, and in particular, uh, the work that we need to do around equity and social justice. So let's get started. Um, I have to be honest and tell everybody that uh, like you, I have my own bias and I define things in a particular way. And I'd like to start off any, any time I talk about uh, social, justice, social justice and equity by letting you know what my definition is right up front. So that helps us be able to communicate. Um, as uh, many of my uh, colleagues know and that uh, I learned a lot from my grandfather who uh, was definitely a civil rights activist um, from the 1950s all the way up to his passing in the early 1970s. Um, one of the most important lessons that we can learn is that we're not communicating with each other until we attach the same meaning to the words that we use. So here's my definition of social justice. The intent to enhance equity across multiple social identity groups to foster critical perspectives and very important, promote social action. Doesn't mean much unless we're actually doing something about the work. And it's not just me that has to do it, it's you and everybody you know. So here's our context. Uh, things are different today than they have been at any point in history. We have huge changing realities that are driven by some very intense social issues. Thank goodness for those brave souls that were out and continue to be out um, telling the truth in the streets of big urban cities and across our country and quite frankly, across the world. Um, we have massive um, political issues. We have a federal government that's occupying cities in our nation right now. And we have a huge economic pandemic in addition to the public health pandemic of COVID-19, where millions of not just um, people living in the United States, but across the world are suffering um, from the loss of jobs and income. And then you couple that with rapid technology changes um, and the need for everyone to have access to technology. Our context is dramatic. Additionally, students of color no longer represent the minority in America's schools, yet we still call them minorities, and they are very much racially marginalized in our schools. Our context is we need more mirrors in our schools, and we need less windows, because that's what our students deserve, and that's what they're entitled to. And social justice work, quite frankly, it's not nice, it's not easy, it's often painful, but it is absolutely necessary. And it's something that we have to make sure happens. I am in my seventh decade of life. This is something that I've done every living, breathing moment of my life. It's something that my mother and father did and my grandparents did. And my hope and prayer is that it's not something my daughter and son's children have to do. Our context also is this, we still have people in our world that believe that opportunities are fixed. And so if one person gets more, that means someone else is gonna get less. And that the only way to quote win is for someone else to lose. Don't believe that. This is a fallacy. Don't fall for the trap of a zero-sum game. That's not the world we live in. By the same token, don't let anyone limit your potential. No one's potential is fixed, and we only limit our own potential when we stay within our comfort zones. So get used to being uncomfortable, because quite frankly, there are some of us that have been uncomfortable for over 400 years. And it's about time that the rest of us got used to that uncomfortableness. The truth, I love that. Everybody leads, everyone follows. Hey, you know, we live in communities and that social construct by its very nature makes us all leaders 
and all followers. We lead by word, and we lead by deed, simply because we're here doing what we do. That means every one of us is a leader and exercises leadership. And I believe that authentic leadership comes from our heart. Not just our heart alone though, but from our heart and the hearts of others. I really would caution us all to not be trapped by the belief that it's the power of external entities, that it's the government, that it's the school district, the school board, it's the police um, that determine what happens next. Uh, I would always advocate, don't listen when people tell you, hey, you know, Dave, that's a really good idea, but here, you know, let me tell you the hard reality. We, we, we can't do that. Don't be trapped by that belief that you are powerless because you are not. Be relentless. We all got to lead with shared values of justice, opportunity, community, and equity. Know the counter narratives that exist. Know them well. And at every opportunity, talk about systemic obstacles that you can see if you open your eyes to equal opportunity and equal justice. Take every opportunity to describe how racial bias and discrimination holds everyone back, not just those who are being discriminated against, but those that hold the privilege and the power. You know, you're gonna to be told, because I certainly have been, hey, you know, I believe in racial justice. I'm an anti-racist. But then you go and you visit, if they're working the school system, you go and you, you go to their classroom or you visit their school and you find that marginalized students still suffer in those places where they work. Well, one of the things that you can do is help them find those competing commitments, those commitments that get in the way of their work towards their stated commitments of racial justice and anti-racism. Be relentless in that work. Those commitments are important because it's in those competing commitments where you will call into question their beliefs, their values, those things that they've held close for a long, long time. And sometimes they haven't ever been able to say them out loud. Sometimes it's very painful and embarrassing for them. But unless you help them uncover and understand what's getting in the way of their work toward those stated goals of racial justice and anti-racism, they're going to just continue to say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm an anti-racist. I believe in racial justice. And then continue to act in ways that will never make that happen. You must be relentless. There is no other way. I tell my students and my colleagues that this work is like on the gallery and never letting it off. Because as soon as you do, the momentum slows down, it begins to stop, and everything comes back to how it was before. Be relentless. The truth, well, the truth is the ideology of whiteness involves the systemic execution of beliefs, policies, and practices that uphold white dominations in society over persons of color. I'm gonna say that again. The ideology of whiteness involves the systemic execution of beliefs, policies, and practices that uphold white domination in society over persons of color. If you are white, you must understand how your racial identity privileges you. If you are white, you must learn to become race conscious where you're able to readily identify the problems associated with racism and be willing to participate in critical discussions about race 
Ah, but that is just the first step. Because if all you do is learn and listen, that's not enough. Be relentless. Take the next step. Act. I like to go back to uh, something 15 years ago. Two guys, man, they got it right. I think these six practice-related ideas are a great way to go about the work of being relentless. Get personal. What could be more personal than race? Keep the spotlight on issues of race. When someone wants to talk about economic discrimination, that's fine. But that's not the same as race. Engage in multiple racial perspectives. This is really hard for white folks to do. But it's something that has to happen. Keep everybody at the table and have people at the table who are very different than you, who view the world differently, who answer questions differently than you, have a different set of friends than you. Those people need to be at the table to help you understand what the problem is and find the solutions. Understand the history and definition of race. You know, white folks were really good at history, but we're not so good at the history of race. And most importantly, always address the issue of whiteness. Perhaps the hardest thing for white people to deal with is that fact that they are white. Be relentless. And finally, the truth. Be relentless. If it's not you, then who's going to do this work? If it's not now, then when's it going to happen? How long do people have to wait? And if you don't do it, if it's not with us, then who are you going to do it with? Find allies. Hey, we all need them. And for those of you that are looking for them, we are here. And remember, anyone who lives in a society, a community, is both a leader and a follower. So don't think you are not a leader. And leadership, while we'd like to think it's about the leader, it's always about everyone else. And if you can understand this and then act upon it, then you're going to make the difference that needs to be made. So be relentless. It was a pleasure to be here today. Thank you, JR, for making this happen for everyone. Um, I'm, I'm uh, proud to know the Avengers and to be uh, part of uh, an incredible cohort of thinkers um, and educators who are going to make the difference for the next generation. So. Um, one of the things I think is very important for all of us to remember is please always fight on.